Thermal expansion. Uh, engineers have to worry about this. Why? You have a long bridge. Heats up in the day. It expands. Well, you don't want that bridge buckling uh, during the day. You want a nice, smooth expansion. Uh, and so they have to put what, what are known as expansion joints in the bridge. How much does the bridge uh, expand when the temperature rises? That's the subject of this section. Now let's get right to it. The linear expansion coefficient, alpha, is what we're going to define right now. I don't know why we use alpha for that, and that's just what we use. So the idea is this. you got a metal bar, say, at some temperature T0, T0, the initial temperature. Then you heat it up. You add some temperature to the original temperature. So it starts at 10 degrees Fahrenheit and goes up to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, say where T naught is 10, and delta T, the change in the temperature, is 10, and 10 plus 10 is 20. How much does it expand? L naught is the original length of the bar, and delta L is the change in the length. How much gets added to the length when you heat it up? And that satisfies to uh, to an excellent degree, this equation, the change in the length, delta L, that's this guy here, in meters, just measured in meters, is equal to the original length, L naught, measured in meters, times the change in the temperature, measured in degrees C, but actually a change in temperature, a one degree C change is the same as a one degree Kelvin change. So either way works just fine. They, they both step at the same rate, whereas the Fahrenheit steps at a different rate. Times a coefficient. It's called the linear expansion coefficient, thermal expansion coefficient. And that's measured in inverse degrees Celsius. Why are they inverse degrees Celsius? Well, this has to be measured in length. This is measured in length, L naught. Delta T is measured in degrees C. So if we want to get rid of the degrees C, then alpha has to be measured in 1 over degrees C. So that's the, the unit of the linear expansion coefficient. So it's delta L is alpha L naught delta T. Uh, for a given temperature change, the change in length is proportional to the length. So the longer the uh, object, the more it will expand. So back, back to this, meaning if you increase the length here, if you double the length, for a given change in temperature, you're going to double the, the amount by which it expands. So. Uh, a shorter object expands uh, a short amount. A larger object, if you double this, it'll expand by twice, twice that much. So on a long uh, bridge, you've got these expansion joints that, uh, that allow the bridge to, to expand and contract as the temperature changes without disrupting the uh, traffic on the road. An anti-scalding device. This is kind of a cool device. I didn't know about it until I, pre I, I prepared this lecture. It screws in onto the end of a faucet. So uh, as the water, so the water's coming out of the, the faucet here, and as the water temperature rises, the actuator spring expands. So this spring expands and pushes this plunger into this opening and prevents the water flow. So that's an anti-scalding device just uh, that comes from uh, thermal expansion. Uh, here are some coefficients of thermal expansion, linear expansion coefficients. 
We're going to talk about volume expansion coefficient in just a second. But now, for now, linear. So for most objects, these coefficients are quite small. 23 times 10 to the minus 6 inverse degree C. That doesn't make for much of an expansion for short objects. But for long objects, you definitely can get an expansion. Um, a, si a concrete sidewalk is built on a 25 degree day. Find the buckling height on a 38 degree day. And some of you have seen this. We had a neighbor in Vernal that had a buckling problem like that. <laughs> it was pretty spectacular. Nice little hollow space under there. Um, So it was built just right between these two houses on a 25 degree day, but what happens on a 38 degree day? Well, um, we look up the expansion coefficient for concrete, which turns out to be 10 times 10 to the 12 times 10 to the minus 6 inverse degree C. The original length, 3 meters, the change in the temperature is 13 degrees C. So that's the difference between these two temperatures, 13 degrees C, is 0 0.00047 meters. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, that's 0 0.047 centimeters. However, if, uh, if you get this is the new length, this is the original length, and you figure out using trigonometry how much it has to rise up as a result, it's a fairly significant number. Um, so the y, so this is the right triangle. One side here, that's y. This side is 3. And then this hypotenuse is 3.00047. So this side plus squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. And we can solve for y by subtracting off uh, this, this side, the 3 squared, and then taking the square root. And just using Pythagorean theorem, you get 0 0.053 meters. That's 5.3 centimeters. So even for a 3 meter piece of concrete, um, 5.3 centimeters, that's something like about, about like that. That's a pretty good sized buckle. So when you're pouring concrete, you might want to leave a little expansion joint in there. Something to... Uh, okay, a demonstration using a bimetallic strip. This is a demonstration of thermal expansion. What I have here is a bimetallic strip with one type of metal on one side. It looks to be brass or bronze and another type of metal on the other side. These two pieces of metal are attached, adhered to each other. And uh, when you heat this strip, uh, these, are, these kinds of strips are used for switches, um, thermostats, this sort of thing. When you heat the strip, given the fact that, that the two metals will have different thermal expansion coefficients, one will expand more than the other, and it will curve, uh, the strip will curve. So I'm heating on both sides to convince you that I'm not cheating by just heating one side and having it expand. So that is a bimetallic strip. Okay, here's uh, just a diagram of what we've been talking about. If we have brass and steel, a bimetallic strip made of brass and steel, then given the fact that brass has a higher linear coefficient of, ex of thermal expansion than steel does, when you heat it, um, the brass will expand more than the steel and the thing will bend to the right. 
with brass being on the outside of the curved part. When you cool it, um, the same thing happens but in reverse. <laughs> Instead of the brass uh, expanding more than the steel, it will contract more and it will uh, be on the inside of the, the brass will be on the inside of the curve. In fact, um, brass and steel, let me just check those guys just to make sure. Uh, iron or steel is 12, and brass is 19. So it has, brass has the higher index of refraction over, compared with steel. One example of the use of a bimetallic strip is in an automatic coffee maker. You can see the heating coil in the, in the coffee maker shown. And then this is the guts of where that heating coil is. So here's a heating coil. And um, the, if you put a current into this heating coil, then, then you heat up the coffee. That's kind of the point. There's a bimetallic strip right here. So this one, this gold-shaped piece would have a piece of brass and a piece of steel, like we talked about before. And if you, if it, if there, if this heating coil heats up this bimetallic switch, and the brass is on this side, and the steel is on the other side of it, then the brass is going to expand more than the steel, and this. This piece shown here in gold is going to curve and it'll break contact, break electrical contact with this piece of metal here. So that then there'd be no current supplied to the heating coil. So it's really genius. Um, so there's no current supplied to the coil. The coil cool, cools down a little bit and then the bimetallic strip cools down contracts back down, they make contact again. It's, um, it's neat. And you adjust the, uh, the point at which they lose contact with this knob, which has a thumb screw that pushes on this piece of metal here shown in uh, a bluish color. So this, is, this shows what happens when it gets hot enough to break contact. There's no electrical um, current going through the heating coil. Um, this is a fun little example, a great conceptual example, one example of um, uh, how well this book, Cutting Ellen Johnson, is written. Do holes expand or contract under heating? So if you heat this, uh, this piece of metal that has a hole in it, you'd think that, well, these guys, each of these is going to expand. This will expand both this way and this way, and that should fill in the hole, shouldn't it? but you'd think wrong. What happens instead is the hole expands as if there were a piece of uh, a, a tile inside the hole. How so? Well, each one of these guys does expand, as we talked about, in both directions. Each one of these tiles expands. But all of them expand, and they're still meeting at the corners, which means that this whole tile had to move from its former position here over to here. And, and these, all the tiles had to move out a little bit, and ultimately the hole expands at exactly the same rate and in the same way as if you had a tile inserted into the hole. Really cool. Another demo. This is a demonstration of thermal expansion. I've got a torch here. I've got a ring and a ball. And the ball does not, at least does not easily fit inside of the ring. I'm going to heat the ring up and expand it with the torch.
and so that's thermal expansion. A square plate made of lead has an oval shaped hole. The oval may be described by the lengths A and B as shown in the drawing. Which of these following uh, correctly describes the plate after its temperature is increased by 200 Celsius degrees? That's a lot. And um, the size of the plate will increase, but A and B will both decrease. Well, what do you think? Um, pause the video, answer the question, come back. Uh, the size of the plate will remain unchanged, um, but A and B will both increase. The size of the plate will increase, and A and B will both increase. So this is the, the answer. The whole plate is going to increase in size, and the hole will, will increase as well. Bimetallic strips used as adjustable switches in electrical appliances consist of metallic strips that must have different what? Um, and, and the answer here is thermal expansion coefficients. 